it's five minutes to five on a Friday morning. Can you believe I actually set my alarm for 10 to five so that I could be up and awake and ready when Taylor Swift's eighth album is released into the world. Yes, of course you can believe it. That sounds exactly like something I'd do. I have my book here with me so that I can pretend this is relevant reading Rush content, but let's be honest, I'm gonna be way too distracted to read. I need to listen properly to every song. It's gonna be here any minute. Oh my God, oh my God, it's here, it's here. Oh my God, it's here, I'm pressing play. Okay, I've put in my earphones so that I can talk to you while the music is playing without getting demonetized. Oh my goodness, I'm only one song in and it's it's so beautiful. I am into this. This is going to be my favourite Taylor Swift era, I can already tell. So last night, while I was waiting for this and getting excited, I actually made a very overly complicated scoring system <laughs> because I couldn't rank the album so far. So I gave them all different points for things like nostalgia feelings, sing-along ability, number of songs that I still replay, um, I can't remember the things, and then just like an overall album ranking and then averaged out all of those scores and was given a list, which I actually think might be quite accurate. So from bottom to top of the albums before, even in bottom place, like I adore every single one of these albums. So bottom place was Speak Now, number six, Fearless, number five, Taylor Swift. Then there is no number four because number three is Joint Red with 1989. Number two, very controversial, but according to the scoring system, number two came out as Reputation, which I know is like the least popular one. But I actually think maybe that's true. That album is a grower. I was not a fan. When it first came out, when she first released um, Look What You Made Me Do, I was like, oh no, this is not my Taylor Swift era. But actually that album, maybe it's the nostalgia feelings really helped that one. But my friends and I like listened to it on repeat, driving around Ireland on a holiday we went to. And that album's a banger. It's got a lot of sing alongable songs. And then number one is Lover. But to be honest, like, I kept looking at that and kind of wanting to rearrange them a bit, and I realised it's because they are all 10 out of 10 albums for me, and there's no correct answer. So that's my ranking so far, but I'm just really waiting for Folklore to slide right the way to the number one slot. Okay, I'm like a quarter of the way in, and this album definitely has like chill enough vibes that I am going to start reading at the same time. It's so beautiful. My assessment so far, and obviously this is just my first listen, is it's not as much fun as her more recent albums, but this is exactly the album that 16 year old me, who was completely obsessed with Swift and used to basically only listen to, it was when her first two albums had come out, so we had Taylor Swift and we had Fearless and I would just sit in my dorm room at boarding school and just listen to those albums and I'd like rearrange them in particular ways to tell different stories and I would just sit there and cry and listen. And that girl, if she could hear this album, this is exactly the album that she would be wanting to listen to in 2020. I feel like if you played her reputation, she'd be like, what is going on? This is not Taylor Swift. So this feels like we've gone full circle. This is a 2020 version of 2006 Taylor Swift and it's beautiful and the songs are really emotional. I loved the one with Bonnie Vera on it That was beautiful, but I am slightly missing the sense of fun that her recent albums have but maybe that's coming We'll see anyway back to the book It's very weird reading this book immediately after reading the Ted Chiang story story of your life because they're both Kind of about time travel is a bit different, but yeah, I keep getting confused which things happened in which one Oh my god, I literally cannot believe I didn't like candles for this. This is such a candles moment. Emma! Baby, let's just take it, take it, baby, let's just take Okay, I finished. There's nothing for it but to listen from the beginning again. Okay, one more thing about Taylor Swift. <laughs> one more, one more for now. Just adding to the Betty debate. Betty is gay. Betty is a song about two women. James is a girl's name. I have loads of evidence for this. Firstly, Taylor Swift and Blake Lively are like best friends and Blake Lively named her daughter James. So Taylor knows James is a girl's name. Also, Taylor herself is named after James Taylor. So by calling the main character James, she's basically calling the main character herself. Taylor Swift is James, she's a girl and she loves Betty. I've solved it. Okay, well who says mornings can't be productive? It's not even 7.30 and I've listened to Taylor Swift's album twice. <laughs> I also did get quite a good bit of reading done, so I'm a little, 
little over a third through, we're almost halfway through now. I love this book. It's like there's a lot to keep track of. So it is this mystery that spans the generations because people can time travel so you never quite know like what period somebody was actually in when they discovered something. So it's a lot to keep track of but it's a lot of fun so I really like it. So I'm now going to do a bit of exercise before I start work. Oh my god, one more thing on the whole Betty theory. I've been reading so much about this. Carly Kloss's middle name is Elizabeth. So James Taylor, Carly Elizabeth, James and Betty are Carly and Taylor. It's a gay song! She wrote a gay song! obviously wearing a cardigan today in honor of Taylor Swift. I'm only working a half day today which is really nice so I just got to do a few hours in the morning. Everyone on the work team chat is talking about Taylor Swift and I'm really nervous. I'm like checking it so nervously because they're not all big Taylor Swift fans and I only want to talk to big Taylor Swift fans today. So far they're being nice about it though so fingers crossed no one says anything mean or I'll just have to sign off for the day and leave. Okay, look, I know I'm getting so deep into all of these fan theories, but like, they have to be true. Taylor and Carly is true. So yesterday I saw people freaking out because when Taylor announced the album and all of the artwork was like her in the woods, Carly Kloss also then posted an Instagram of her hugging a tree in a similar looking woods. Everyone was like freaking out. And I was like, okay, maybe. But then today, Carly just posted another Instagram that was of, you know, she does that, um, like she teaches coding and stuff, which is those coding programs. She posted an Instagram about that and this like animation of all this code going across the screen and it said in the middle, really clear, Easter egg. She's literally telling us it's an Easter egg. Like at this point, I'm not being crazy anymore, right? This is real. Maybe I'm sleep deprived. Oh, it's the weekend and I have now listened to Taylor Swift four times all the way through. Now I'm gonna sit and do some reading before we play tennis. I'm in a great mood. Taylor Swift has brightened up my day. Can you believe it? This time yesterday, I didn't even know this was coming. That was so close. It was what well, we were on. We were on 5-2 and I I just had to win one more and I so nearly did. It went to like juice my van, juice my van, like 10 times. It was so nearly gonna be mine. And then actually technically I did win at one point, but I could tell from Archie's face that he'd let me win that point. So I was like, no, don't count it. So we kept going and then Archie won. <laughs> After a long time, that was the longest game of all of them. It's fine. I'm still happy we got to play. I'm not bitter or sad about it. Still at all. Work a bit too, so. <laughs> but a little bit better inside. Started my fifth listen of the album while in line for the post office, and I swear this album gets more emotional on every listen through. I just had to play Exile twice in a row because you know when a song just like hits you so deeply in your feels that you're like, I have to experience that again. <sighs> My friend Ellen just pointed out that we've spent a long time this morning <laughs> over WhatsApp reading Taylor and Carly conspiracy theories on Tumblr, like a lot of it. We are down that rabbit hole, I believe every single word of it. I also went down the separate rabbit hole that Ellen showed me of Taylor Swift and Diana Agron. There's a lot of it. But anyway, Ellen just pointed out that fully counts as reading. So I am way further ahead in the reading rush than I thought. This is my favorite sight. Hippo just skulking in the plant bed. <laughs> I just was washing my hands and looked out the window and there she was. What are you doing there? It's like, this is our garden work in progress. There is so much planting going on. So the way that the time travel works in this and also like some of the emotional situations that come up because of it really reminds me of The Time Traveler's Wife, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I've read it like a hundred times. So yeah, getting those kind of vibes, but that one is very much like a love story and this is much darker. This is a murder mystery. There's so many layers to this. I still do not know where it's going. Really hooked. I don't wanna let you down. It's the only thing I think about every morning. Finished! Ah, that was so good. It's so weird. That was like the time traveller's wife meets the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. 
but like slightly less confusing to keep track of than that book which I just couldn't do at all. It was so cool, it was so unique. There obviously, me being me, were holes I could pick in the way time travel worked but generally speaking I really liked it. I actually didn't find myself getting irritated at it. Like you just have to not think too hard about it because none of it makes sense but I liked the way it was done in this book. It was really clear, really consistent and the book as a whole was such a fun mix of genres um, because it's a mystery overall. There's some bits where it gets really dark and it's kind of about like corruption within this company. There's also some really romantic parts. There was a great diverse cast of characters being represented here. So um, the author Kate Mascareñas is mixed race and bisexual and we have bi characters, mixed race characters, lesbian characters, black characters, like it's a, it's a really diverse cast which I really enjoyed and most of the romance in here is queer. Since I mentioned in yesterday's video that I was reading this book, um, quite a few people commented with quite mixed reviews, so some people said they loved it, some people said they really couldn't get into it and I can see how it might not be some people's cup of tea, you might struggle to get into it, but it's so up my alley, like such exactly my perfect kind of weird wonderful little book. So thank you so much to Victoria who gave this to me for my birthday. What a great birthday present. Ah, so that means I have ticked off another prompt. This one was for uh, the prompt to read a book in a genre you want to read more of and the genre I picked was time travel as a genre because you know I always love it. Technically that does also mean that I have ticked off all of the prompts if I double up so I can now like earn all of the badges as well as the ones that I've already told you about this one will work for Moonstone and actually so will the house without windows that's also very Moonstone -y. I've left that one upstairs but they were both shiny and pearly then the house without windows also works for the prompt reader book starting with the word the oh and so does this one the psychology of time travel and reading a book set on a different continent this one and the house without windows are both set in the states the House of That Windows is kind of set in an unnamed place to be honest, but this one is clearly set in the US, i.e. North America, i.e. a different continent. So all of those badges are there if I want them, but I'm going to remove them for now and see if I can try and get them all with seven different books. So the next book that I'm actually just going to start reading straight away is Such a Fun Age. I hadn't even registered when I made my TBR that this is the Reading Rush group book, so that is so perfect and it's also yet another Pearly Moonstone cover. Why am I reading so many Pearly Moonstone covers? I love it. This will be the longest book I've attempted to read so far and it is a problem that I am kind of exhausted because I was up at 5am listening to Taylor Swift but it's also a Friday night and I have nothing to do and we're going into the weekend so basically I'm just going to read non-stop. I should stop blathering on and start doing that reading I'm talking about. Okay, check this out. Argy has finished the garden. Look at all of this stuff he's planted. Oh, it's so nice. So what have we got up here? and peas oh, so cool. and basil. Corn, cucumber, beans, jalapenos. Jalapenos, that's cool. Cayennes. Whoa. Check out this naked cover, it's so purple and shiny, I love that. That is me for the day, for this vlog, I'm sitting down to do some editing and then going to sleep and I don't have to wake up at 5am tomorrow which is great news. What a great day one of Taylor Swift world, day five of Reading Rush. My conclusions at the end of this day are that this isn't going to be my favourite album of all of them but I love it more with every listen and I can't wait to keep listening on repeat tomorrow because I always like things more the more you listen the more you like are able to sing along and stuff but honestly all of the theories and conspiracies and deep dives and everything this album has generated has just been my favourite thing of the whole week so thank you Taylor Swift and I would love to know what all of your guys thoughts are on this album if you also like listen to it at midnight or 5am or whatever it was in your time zone released oh an update on such a fun age I read the opening of this and oh my goodness I love it so much already and I don't I think I've mentioned before that I don't actually like starting books very often <laughs> like I love a book when I'm into it but I never really like starting them because it's quite a lot of work to like get yourself emotionally invested in the characters but oh boy from the very first page of this book I was in so I am so excited to keep reading. Happy Taylor Swift day everybody and I will see you tomorrow!